It all comes down to this in New Orleans. It's the men's final for the second stop on the 2022 AVP Tour, and it's the one versus the three seed. Phil Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson facing off against Taylor Kraft and Taylor Sander. Sander in his first finals appearance in his first season on the AVP Tour. And welcome to Coconut Beach Volleyball Complex, where we have been hanging out all weekend long. But this is our final matchup. Cameron Irwin alongside Dana Blanton. And Dane, tell me a little bit of your expectations for these two teams. To start off, Kraft and Sander. Well, you know what? I'm expecting some fireworks for sure. Number three versus number one. Everybody's been talking about the team of Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander. This is the second AVP tournament as partners, fourth all time. And this is one of the most athletic teams you're ever going to see. They're going to have to win a lot of the broken plays. They're going to have to win all the scrappy plays that are a bit unorthodox orthodox because they are a little bit undersized six foot and six foot three on the other side of the net it's all the experience in the world but it is the first avp tournament as partners 60 avp wins for phil dahlhauser and 17 for casey patterson these are the veterans they know how to win they're very accustomed to sunday on the center court phil will be looking to own the net as a blocker, and if he can exploit that edge, he'll be in good shape. 489 tournaments played between Phil Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson. Experience at its finest. Mark Sherman with our introductions. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time. One more match from wherever you're watching. Welcome inside. You are in the exact right place at the exact right time because we have got four guys who are locked and loaded and looking for the win here in New Orleans. And this first young man just played in his first ADP semifinal, and now he has a chance for his first ever A. VP victory out of Brigham Young University, the player of the year indoors in 2014 across this great nation that represented the USA at the Olympic Games. And now he is here on the beach. Welcome, Mr. Taylor Sander. <laughs> And his partner, also a star on the indoor side, National Player of the Year at a Long Beach State in 2013, but from Honolulu, Hawaii, from the baby court, we knew where he was headed all along. He is already an eight-time winner on the AVP Tour at a Honolulu. It's Taylor Crab. <laughs> And uh, their opponents. This first guy out of Newberry Park, California. You're like, finally, about time. The man with the suave hawk, the man with the best whistle in the world. He is a six, what do we got? 17, 16, 17, 17 time winner on the AVP tour. And could he get number 18 with a guy he's been on the opposite side of the net? most of his career. Well, now he's with Phil, and now he has a chance for number 18. It is Mr. Casey Patterson. <laughs> and his partner has won 60. That's six zero AVP titles and he has a chance to do it with yet another partner oh my goodness and you know what he still looks like he's like 28 years young you still look like you got a long ways to go Mr. Dalhauser ladies and gentlemen he is an Olympic gold medalist he does things that nobody else in the world can do let me hear it for the beast Phil Dalhauser experience on the side of Phil Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson. 
on the other side. Wow, one of the greatest defenders, not just domestically, but also internationally, and Taylor Crabb now partnered up in the first season on the beach for Taylor Sander, one of the greatest outside hitters in the indoor game across the country. It's one versus three here in the men's final. Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Blanton. It's time to get things rolling. Mr. Suave Hawk himself will get us started. Starts on Taylor Sander. Jumbo. Oh, little jumbo shrimp to get us started. Taylor Sander with the first point. Yeah, that's the best way to come out, right? Everybody thinks that they're high flying. They're just going to use the power, but it's that finesse game. If they can really place the ball where they need to throughout this match, they will be in good shape. Well, interesting, too. He starts off with finesse. Everyone knows the power that that arm can bring from Taylor Sander. Casey Patterson stepping into that. And what a cut from the right side. Yeah, you see how Casey is having a good time already. That could be trouble for the other side of the net. And that is the thing about this new partnership between Casey and Phil. They're playing loose, they're playing with energy, and they seem to be rejuvenated. Phil Dahlhauser looking for his 61st title. He won Austin, Texas, just a few weeks ago, alongside Andy Benish, probably one of the most fun teams to ever watch. Both six foot nine, both blockers. But to be able to see them split block and play defense was incredible. Now he's partnered up alongside another Olympian, Casey Patterson, back in 2016. Five Olympic bursts between those two. Phil Dahlhauser with four himself, an Olympic gold to his name. from Taylor Stander. There you see Taylor Crabb come in. He's just six feet tall. That's what he's listed at. He's going up against Phil Dahlhauser, who's six foot nine. So he's got his work cut out for him. But Taylor Crabb has one of the quickest arms on tour. Casey Patterson will see the share of side out opportunities. Everyone avoiding Phil Dahlhauser. So if you're Taylor Sander and you've got a block like Phil in front of you, what are some things you're telling yourself as you're going up for every single shot? Well, you're looking at the vision. You're looking at what he's giving you. And there's going to be times when you want to try to beat him. And there's times when you want to shoot, shoot over his head and use your finesse shots. But you have to be selective, just like right there. Crab going up, seeing that the hit's not available, but the little cut shot was. Yeah, nice heads up play from Taylor Crab. As you take a look at their journey to the final four wins straight, got them to this point. Wins over the 14, 6, 7, and number four seed. That's a big one over Buttinger and Field in straight sets. I know the first one a little bit over time. Woo, if that thing lands in. That's dangerous. Yeah, I love to see that. Taylor Sander is an exceptional indoor player, and he's converted his game to the beast, but he's brought over a lot of the attributes, and you know how tough the indoor serve is. Now he's coming out here serving a fearless jump serve on the beach. Bringing those indoor attributes for sure. One of those being great hands as he sets that ball up as well. So between the serve and the set, what else is there? There you see Taylor Crabb crushing the ball. You know what this whole match is going to be about, Cam? It's about limiting errors. It's about being as efficient as you can when you have that ball. Not giving away easy ones, just like Casey Patterson right there. It's close, you got it. Hey, what, do you, what do you like to say? Play the close ones, or, or if it's if it's close, go. If what is it? If you don't know, you go. If you don't ah, know, I love you go. that one. I think that's the second thing that I'm stealing from you and implementing in my coaching. <laughs> Bill Dahlhauser playing some matrix there with the net, stays on his feet. 
Known for his epic fall down sets, perfectly placed. Phil Dahlhauser, not only four time Olympian, one of the greatest setters, one of the greatest blockers, one of the greatest attackers. I mean, the list just goes on and on for the GOAT. He can do it all right there. And last week or two weeks ago, we got to see him play quite a bit of defense as well. So he kind of debunked the thought that he couldn't play in the backcourt. Phil with an ace. Now float. You'll take a little trickler ace anytime you can get it. As I mentioned, neither of these athletes, all four of them are so solid that they don't give up many points. You got to get the points any way you can here in a final. Out of this that was well placed with the long arms of Phil. Get his armpits over the top of the net at that point. And another big question is who is going to put more pressure from that back service line? It's all about getting the opposition out of system. Phil was able to do that on the last play. Pirouettes for Taylor Crab and a cagey shot down the line, but an even better way to beat Pat. We've had this discussion all week long. The pressure of playing with Phil Dahlhauser. Anything short of a victory, I think, is coming up short as we look at the road to this position. They got there with four consecutive wins in the winner's bracket to get to this point, and they haven't looked back. But so much experience, both being 42 years of age. Yeah, and that was an epic showdown in the semifinal to get to this one from Partain and Lotman. If you didn't get a chance to see that one, you're going to want to go another back and watch it as Bill dials up another ace with a jump float serve deep into the corner. Sometimes that position of the serve is just as important as the velocity. Out of the middle, quick sign out. Out of Long Beach State, player of the year, one of the great outside hitters in the collegiate game now, a beach volleyball professional, qualified into the Olympics. Alongside Mr. Jake Gibb. Taylor, oh, nearly gets the dig and kill, but of course, for that Olympic, for that Olympic birth, had to deal with some COVID regulations, so wasn't able to compete in that last Olympics alongside the legendary Jake Gibb, an Olympian nonetheless. And the two-time Olympian Taylor Sander, bronze medalist indoor, showing us how it's done from the right side. Taylor Sander is such a dynamic athlete. He's able to get up, contort his body, face shoulders one way, hit the opposite direction. Perfectly It's fun to watch these defenders side out each time because both of them can bring the pace, but I'm really impressed with their vision right now, choosing to go with some of the shots that are quickly falling. Yeah, it's so funny, you know, if you're not accustomed to beach volleyball, you can't be one dimensional. You can't hit all the time and you can't shoot all the time. You have to have that varied offense. I don't care who it is that you are. One technique is not going to work. And that's why everybody really yeah, efficient on their finesse and killer crap right there, making it look easy with a roll shot. Yeah, doing just that, this time over the top of the block as they're just one away from the technical timeout, trailing by two points. Seen a lot of teams throughout the weekend change up their serve from this side of the court, this being the bad side, wind at the back. And Phil from the top shelf earns the 12th point and puts them into the technical timeout with a three point advantage. Yeah, well, 
Well, with Phil going up against Taylor, remember Taylor's just six foot three inches tall and he is the full-time blocker on this squad. I think this was one of the most talked about teams as we take a look at the 2022 schedule. 16 tournaments, Cameron, and the players excited about this. Yes, without a doubt, 2022 was a welcome sight for all of these athletes. So thrilled to see 16 stops on the schedule, including three Gold Series events, the first being in Atlanta and also the big time championships in Phoenix, Arizona. That will be it come September. That's September 23rd through the 24th. So many of these AVP pros have those dates circled because, yes, it is a little bit of an exclusive event. Your best finishes from the Gold Series will be able to qualify you just 16 teams competing on the men's and women's side for those events and a lot of the athletes putting a mark there saying hey that's one of our goals for the season being able to show up in Phoenix as everyone has also shown up and right here in New Orleans an epic crowd we've had so much fun all weekend as we've been boiling under the sun but thriving in the beach volleyball Bill Dahlhauser back out on the sand the vet with the advantage. And there's the pace from Taylor Crab attacking a bit more out of the middle. Yeah, you're gonna have to pick your spots. And we've seen the finesse that time he goes for it. And it's always risky going for a heavy hit when you have Phil Dahlhauser in your face. Oh, that block, oh, Taylor Stander. Remarkable how high he just got. Yeah, there was so much talk about this team of the Taylors teaming up in 2022. And the big question was, you know, Taylor Crabb had played with one of the best blockers of all time with a lot of size. And then he switched up to a more athletic, smaller blocker in Taylor Sander. And I don't think it's any surprise these guys are already in their first final. from Taylor Crab. Oh, yeah. And the bump cut point. Crab and Sanders. Oh, you don't see that very often. That's called creativity. That's called a high volleyball IQ, knowing where your defenders are, taking a look at it, overhand dig right there, scoop up set, and then there is the bump cut, and not even the great Casey Patterson can run that down. set and full send for Taylor Crab. The speed is there in the deep end here for Taylor Crab. And then at the end of that play, what does he do? He challenges Phil. So he runs us down, a beautiful love. The set's nice, it's a little off the net, but he goes for it. That ball can get blocked, he knows that, but there's times when you gotta roll the dice and go at Phil. And now it is just a one point game. Sander looking for his first title and just his second tournament played this year. Says he's got four total played previously. A few of those coming way back in the day. This is his first full season on the AVP Tour. Oh, wow. Casey Patterson. <laughs> Casey Patterson getting up and he's even got a little smile after that. Maybe impressed even himself with that whip of an arm cross court, extremely sharp angle. Not a lot of players going to dig that one. It's all those pickleball overheads. Great shoulder strength training for Casey Patterson. And that is a very cagey shot from Taylor Crabb. I don't even know what you call that. I call that like the downshift. He comes in looking like he's gonna hit and then just kind of wrists it down cross body right underneath Phil. Jason Patterson on his horse. 
Oh yeah, Sander and Atias at 14. And Taylor Sander, solid press. That's not easily done when the opposition is coming in hot. Full send, but a nice press from Sander. Yeah, here's the, you know, the broken plays that I'm talking about that the Taylors need to win. A little joust at the net, Casey Patterson and Taylor Sander getting the best of him there. I think it's a big opportunity when they have these broken plays using that athleticism. And there's a well-timed block from Taylor Sander. How about that? He just waited. He knew it was going to be a shot, and you have to be able to make those adjustments on the fly. Sander waits, sees the shot, and then he just throws it back quickly. And as soon as he hit it, Casey Patterson knew he was in trouble. I think if the Taylor gang can pull out the first set, they're going to put themselves in a pretty good position because Dollhauser, get this, 21 and one this, or excuse me, since 2020 in terms of picking up the victory 21 and one let's take a look at the men's final from austin it's the number four seed versus the number two men's final starts now we start on phil dollhauser and phil already with the day <laughs> Teams are high flying. Oh my! Wow! Another also big all swing all from Troy Field. Again, finish with a second chance. Pace has got the ball. And a second goal for Andy Finish. Tight. Coming back out onto the stand, 15 to 12, Crab and Sander with the one point advantage. You take a look at the most career wins, and where is Phil Dahlhauser? He's at the 101 mark. So, here, if he can pick up the win in New Orleans, would be that 102. Some epic names on that list. And, Dane, I know you always like to talk about it. A uh, little different in terms of schedule played and the number of tournaments played for those guys just above Phil. Yeah, and I love to look at the percentage. If you can imagine, Kent Steff is 46% winning percentage of all tournaments he's played in, and Phil Dahlhauser at 41. Karch would be third in that percentage right there. So 41%, 41.4 to be exact, for Phil Dahlhauser as he enters the Century Club. Wow, is that an exclusive club? Yeah, no, that's a great point that you bring up because different numbers of tournaments have been played as Taylor Kraft gets another phenomenal overhead big and delivery. Talk about transition play, Taylor Kraft. Wow, is this thing turned around right now? It looks like the Taylors are in control. Beautiful play, dug right out of the net, set out of the net perfectly for Taylor Crab, and he's starting to feel it with his three-point lead. He was just hanging up there at the top of his jump. Oh, Another block. No, Jumping block. into the angle, Taylor Stander. Monster block it is. Well, he's proving that it doesn't matter how tall you are. If you got big hops like Taylor Sander and good timing and experience, you can get up and block the best of them as they go to a four point lead. arm from Casey Patterson. He's not going anywhere. Smile still on his face. And he knows if he's got the goat on his side, 
anything is possible, including a three-point deficit. And maybe a little frustration in that last hit after a couple of blocks by Taylor Sander. He just, Casey went up and ripped it. Speaking of ripping it, Taylor Sander doing the same. Dahlhauser and Patterson in a little bit of trouble here. You know, a four-point lead, biggest lead that Crab and Sander have had in this set. And when you win that first set, it's a lot more comfortable than trying to fight back. Sixteen at nineteen is the side switch. As I mentioned, since 2020, Phil Dahlhauser is 21 and one when winning the first set. Casey Patterson, three ice cream. Oh yeah. <laughs> from the left. Wow, a lot of firepower, but how about the dig by Casey Patterson? One-handed stab, he keeps it in play somehow. And then Taylor Sander, look, just a sliver in an alley available and he finds it. That point, ball is served long. So Taylor and Taylor just need one side out play here. One way to do it, cross body Plus swing Taylor, for set Taylor, number one. What I love to see, Cameron, is that they're going yeah, at it, right? They are rolling the dice, up. and even though Phil Over. is one of the best blockers of all time, they're challenging him, making him do his work. And as long as they keep getting away with it, they're going to keep on swinging. 857. That's the efficiency for Taylor Tander after set number one. Are you sharp chairs? Radio gym shorts that you have from college, they're done. Get them out of here. It's time to upgrade your short game with the one from Fabletics Men. We love them. Your girlfriend will be stealing these. They're the best. This fabric fixes another major issue, fit. It's got this crazy stretch to it that looks so cute when I do my yoga or errands or like literally anything. They're the most comfortable, best feeling, luxe-tastic fabric that we have ever worn. Dear Mainland, aloha. My brother and I hear lots of you have discovered a real Hawaiian favorite, big wave golden ale. That's the good kind stuff, yeah, bro. Maybe it's the island flavor that makes each sip taste like a little vacation. That's a whole lot of little vacations right there, huh, brother? That's like a big vacation. Retirement. One life, right? Mahalo. Big wave golden ale from Kona Brewing. The life of the party has been right here in New Orleans for our men's final. It has been a phenomenal championship Sunday. We are just about to get the second set underway here at Coconut Beach, where the number one seed, Phil Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson, are 
in a little bit of hot water as they drop set number one to the number three seed, Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander. I'm Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Blanton. And we've got sharks in the water if you're Phil Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson, Dane. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the big difference has been aggression. Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander hitting 636 as opposed to Dahlhauser and Patterson's 238. You see they're winning the digging category and a huge surprise, they're winning in the blocking category. This is a category that we thought Phil would dominate in, but it has been Taylor Sander who's been dominant at the net. For Phil and Casey, they know at this point they have to get much more aggressive. They have to get the Taylors out of system and if they don't, the Taylors are going to keep on coming at them. Yeah, you see some of the efficiency there in terms of a team efficiency, but Taylor Sander is errorless in terms of his attacks. He's six for seven after set number one. Taylor Crabb, 10 of 15, hitting 533. Phil Dahlhauser, a marginal 750 per usual. Just four total attempts for him, though, in set number one. When Phil was playing alongside Nick Lucina, there was always second set Phil. Started to option more and became more involved. We'll see if he does it here in set number two. Beautiful cut shot by Casey Patterson. They just have to steady out. Remember, this is the first time that they have played together, so they're trying to put all that experience together and somehow muster up a victory. But this will be their biggest test of the weekend, no doubt. Bill Dahlhauser looking to go back to back. Brother Taylor Sander looking for his first title on tour. And I don't think anybody would be surprised. There was so much talk about this team. This is the second AVP tournament as partners, fourth time overall. And if they get a victory here, it would be surprising, but not that surprising yeah. considering the volleyball pedigree that Taylor Sander Yeah, quite the pedigree, but I love the shot there that I just saw from Casey Patterson. At times, Taylor Sander at the end of that first set was getting some blocks on Casey, kind of that delayed block into the angle. So this time Casey put some more pace on it. Doesn't allow for Taylor Sander to get his full press at the right time. Taylor Crab wow. with the side out. So hard to stop. He just keeps coming at you. You just don't know what he's going to do. And that's why he has had such a successful career. You just can't tell whether he's going to hit, he's going to shoot. It's so difficult. And there's another defensive change on the side of Crab and Sander. Taylor Crab trying his best imitation of a big time blocker like Phil. Big snap, Patterson. Patterson bombing balls. Remember, about 42 years of age. He's playing some of the best volleyball I've seen him play. Remember, he's six foot six. He's a full time defender. He worked on the game to get efficient in the backcourt. And take a look at this right here. This is the white claw spike of the day, no doubt. Ripping it, putting a little extra energy on it for Casey Patterson. He knows he needs to turn it up. He knows what's out there for grabs. It's the white claw spike of the day. Oh, he's going to wear that one proudly. <laughs> Anytime you tell Casey he's got the best shot of the day, you know it's going to end up somewhere on social as it should. Casey Patterson, a great content creator and so fun to follow on social media. Taking another great shot there. I think he's realized they're going to target him, and this is up to him to side out and not give up any points. This is just Dolhauser and Patterson's first tournament playing together. However, both of them have been on tour for so many seasons, 20 total seasons for Phil, 19 for Casey. Tough play to have to make, but Casey Patterson sends that into the middle of the net. 
Yeah, I think Phil, you know, tried to set that back set. It was a little quick and he pushed it a little too wide. Casey had to chase it down, never got his feet under the ball. Aggressiveness has been the answer for the Taylors. Look at this bombing from the back line, going for it. Little matrix move to get out of the way, but that one was too close to let go if you're Phil. And there's another one by Taylor Sander. Sander, another ace. Sander goes back to back, and this time it's at the hand of Phil Dahlhauser. Little wrist away out of the middle. Reminds me of Jake Gibb. Even more pace and the option. <laughs> this time, Casey Patterson. Casey on two. He wow. just climbed the just ladder at 32. Todd Lisi, look at the velocity on Taylor's serve right there, Sander. And then a perfect setup option, and Casey Patterson unleashes it. The athleticism is off the charts. <laughs> And there's a shot at the hand of Taylor Sander. A lot of people wondered with Taylor coming from the indoor game, what kind of finesse and what kind of shots he'd be having. And when I spoke to Taylor Crabb, his partner, he said, a lot of people don't realize this guy was one of the best junior beach volleyball players out there. They've been friends since they were about 15. He said growing up, Taylor Sander won just about every junior tournament on the beach. So he still has a lot of experience on the sand, just not in the last several years. They talk about the learning curve being pretty substantial. We've had Rich Lamborn on the airways, their coach for most of the weekend. And he's doing some really solid work with these two. You know, they'll be heading off to world championships here in just a few short weeks. I'll tell you what, Phil and Casey are in a little bit of trouble because I thought they'd come out a little more aggressive here in the second set, turn the tide, maybe steal some of the uh, the fire, but it's been all Taylor Crabb and Taylor Sander. They're bombing from the back line. They're taking care of things, and Patterson's hitting 240 right now. Everybody else on the court is hitting over 500. He's the one with the most attempts, so it's going to be up to him if they're going to turn this thing around. I'm just waiting for the option, Dane. I'm waiting for the option plays. <laughs> Why do you want the option? You think uh, Phil's going to start to hit that option? Is that what you're waiting on? Well, I just think when you're seeing somebody like Casey that's got a 192 efficiency right now, seeing every single serve, if Casey just tosses one up to the GOAT, I don't and especially with a little bit of the change up in differential of size. You got six foot five Taylor Sander oh, yeah, and it's Phil. I like that. I like my off there from Casey Patterson have. tossing that ball up. So we loaded him up in the you know, I like that, you know, and, and he, he used to do it quite a bit with Nick to relieve a lot of pressure. So, you know, he's got to get in the right mind frame to, to get aggressive, to do that. But they haven't been able to play real aggressive volleyball because on the other side of the net, the Taylors are, are really taking it to them and putting so much pressure that they can't really get a foothold and they don't look comfortable siding out. Yeah, that's a great call by you. The pressure is coming from the service line, which hasn't allowed for the option to really exist. And one of those, even the direction of Phil, the three aces, just in the last few points alone, two at the hand of Sander and one from Taylor Crabb. That's a great point by you. It's hard to play an option play when somebody's serving ace is your direction. Everyone's got their hands up here in NOLA. It's 90 degrees as the sun is going down, but we've still got one set left. Will they push it to three? That's going to be the question. Phil Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson have got to dig deep and find a little extra something here after dropping set number one. 
some Kona Brewing Company beers in, in those stands for sure, as well as some White Claws. Some Waikia water is flowing, as well as our Wilson Sporting Goods, Wilson Optics Ball. Best ball out there. No way! Ooh. Three of the craziest <laughs> contacts I have ever seen. Uh, I think that was a Casey's foot was cover a or a day. leg cover. Let's take a look at it here. Here's the pass, the set, falling back. He gets blocked. He gets that up with his left and then inside out. Wow. Talk about creativity. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that in beach volleyball. Nice read, Casey Patterson. Casey Patterson turns the transition. Free ice cream, says Casey. That's exactly what they need right there. And he's having his normal conversation with himself right there, getting himself engaged, getting himself fired up. He knows he's in control. The ball is going to be rolling his way more times than not. And they trail by three. How about the speed and the kick save? Trying to pull one out of the book of Casey Patterson, one of the best at that kick save. I always think back to the epic moment Casey had in New York City a few years back. Remarkable Taylor Crap even got a hand on that ball. Wow, I that, that actually would have been, that that been Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. I'm not sure what that beam is. It's kind of strange, but uh, it's not traditional, that's for sure. Talk about what it takes to have that shot. The high roller over the top of Phil Dahlhauser. Yeah, you're probably shooting that thing at 13 feet, trying to get it over his blocks. But at six feet, Taylor Crab knows all the shots in the world. That's why he was a national player of the year on the indoor game at the collegiate game with Long Beach. He just knows how to tool blocks. He knows how to go over you, through you, under you, whatever it takes, he possesses it. Just a two point game here. One away from the technical timeout. Casey Patterson summoning the crowd his direction. You heard the ankle call, and how about that move from Phil Dahlhauser? Yeah, late move. It was a seriously sharp angle. He had to reach over the net to get it, and then he was able to keep it in play. Set number two, and we have had some phenomenal volunteers. I'm listening to you, Chase. Who have been here all weekend long? All these lovely young people wearing these green shirts. Well, we got a chance to catch up with Casey Patterson, team, Patterson and talk about what exactly it feels like getting a chance to play with the GOAT. And now they're going to help me. The most exciting part is just playing with him in general. I've always kind of, I used to be a full time blocker when I first started. And the first tournament I won in 2009, I was full time blocking. And so, I played him one time and I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to go to a much higher level if I stay here. So I was like, I got to play defense and maybe one day I'll get the chance to play with them. Um, so I'm super excited. Uh, I was probably more nervous than the guys playing that we played today because I was like, I'm finally getting to play with Phil. So uh, it's been a fun time so far getting that first match out of the way. And, you know, he's, in my opinion, the greatest player ever in the game. So, I mean, the, he proved it in Austin. Like, he doesn't even train, can show up and split block, play defense, transition. And he's just smooth as ever. So I'm just happy to be here and stoked to learn from him in this one, you know, this event today. I love that from Casey Patterson saying, I just love the chance to get to learn from him, both 42 years old, been playing on the tour for 19 and 20 total seasons, but he understands who's next to him. Casey Patterson in his own right, an Olympian and still learner's mindset. You have to love that as he's playing alongside the GOAT.
Yeah, you know, and it's cool to hear uh, Casey Patterson talk like that about Phil because, you know, Casey won his first tournament in 2009, and that was a year after Phil had already won a gold medal. And that took place, I believe, in Coney Island with uh, Ty Loomis back in the day. And, and Casey was a full-time blocker then. So just to show you how far his game has come in the last 13 years. That's a tough serve, and Casey Patterson may or may not have just stepped on the ball, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> KG veteran move. There's a look at Phil Dahlhauser and the number of wins he's had with different partners. Todd Rogers up there, Nick Lucena, 26 total, Sean Rosenthal, eight. Those are both international as well as AVP in terms of totals. Will Casey Patterson be the fifth partner for at top before Phil Dahlhauser to win a title on the AVP Tour? On the AVP alone, he's had 42 with Rogers, 14 with Lucena, two with Rosenthal, and one with Benish, just in Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's funny, you know, playing with Phil at this point in time, after we saw what he did with Andy Benish two weeks ago, it's like the pressure's on. You play with Phil, you better get a victory. It's like the victory tour for Phil at this point, right? Like, goes to the Olympics four times. Might as well just start playing with anybody and everybody. Have some fun. And you know what? It does look like Phil is having more fun than he ever has playing beach volleyball. I, if you get a chance to go watch that final from Austin, the smile on his face. He talked about feeling so youthful, playing free because there were no expectations. Just so fun to see him out here enjoying the game. Smile on his face everywhere he goes. Yeah, I'd love to see how fired up Andy Benish was as well. You could just see that joyful excitement winning his first tournament. I think a lot of that rubbed off on Phil and made him think back, have a little nostalgia of, of his first win back in maybe 2005 in Austin with Nick Lucena. Take a look, finding the open court. Another nice shot from Casey Patterson as the shadows start to come in here at the Coconut Beach Volleyball Complex. Over 100,000 square feet of sand, the largest in the United States. That's in terms of a sand complex. A beautiful facility here. Hey. Oh! The the Challenging the, the fingers of Phil Dahlhauser. I guess it's better than the forearms, right? Yeah, whatever it takes. I know that Taylor Crab has to be thinking to himself, he knows when to take those risks, and he's just going to challenge Phil. He knows that he can possibly use the block, hit the ball off the block. But, you know, every once in a while, Phil is going to stuff that ball down. But Crab and Sander are in the driver's seat right now. They are so close, but you know there's going to be a big push by the veterans. Taylor Sander again. Monster block wow. is accurate. Mark Sherman. Take a look at that big crowd's huge move. He starts that he's looking like he's going to block the line. He's making a big jump into the angle. They call that a four block. And it has seemed to be working right now against Casey Patterson. They change it up, put Taylor Crab into the angle, but too much heat off the hand of Patterson. Fearless defense by Taylor Crab. Not worried about sacrificing his body. He always gets his body behind him. Dig that ball any way that's possible. Crab from the right. What is going on right here? 42, he looks like more like 24. Completely flying across the back line. He's moving so quickly right now, and Phil knows exactly what to do with the ball just above the net.
It's so fun to watch Taylor Crab offensively because even the sound of that contact is so soft. It shows what great control he has in terms of ball on, excuse me, hand on ball. Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander have already bested their performance from Austin, where they finished with a fifth, just missing the semifinals. Over the top of his head, and with an angled approach from the right, Hobson and falling to the stand. Well, you asked for it, Cameron. You said you wanted more options. Phil is now giving it to you with transition plays. They're not easy options. He's falling backwards. He's five, six feet off the net, but he knows he needs to relieve some of the pressure because Patterson getting just about every free ball and serve. Taylor Crabb nearing that as well with 31 total attempts compared to Patterson's 35. Make it 32 attempts, and there is Phil doing Phil things. We are knotted up at 17 apiece. Well, note that block right there that tied it at 17, because this could be a turning point right now, and the momentum, it just kind of feels like it's starting to swing. with his right hand and then Phil puts it in perfect position. And look at that look on his face right there. Casey Patterson has pumped up as I've ever seen him. Can we please make that a meme? Just that single shot of Casey Patterson's expression. The lead has switched sides. And another, are you joking me? Casey recycles. Bill says, ah, oh, Casey, I want you to go yes, again. 19 to 17. Casey Patterson willing this into existence. <laughs> oh, wow. Is this entertaining right now? He's always been an entertainer, but he is playing some of the best volleyball that I've ever seen him play. And having such a great time doing it. And the turnaround right here, Dahlhauser and Patterson has been really incredible. You said, remember that block to get it to 17 apiece. Now things still continuing the direction of Dahlhauser and Patterson. Casey Patterson's efficiency bumping up now. 19 total kills. That's comparable to Taylor Krabs, 19 kills as well. There's a look at the Taylors, who did take set number one. They're still very much in set number two. They pick up the second set. They will be your New Orleans Open champ. If not, we're going three. Yeah, they knew it would not be easy. They made a huge push, and Phil and Casey just would not go away. And now, just a couple of points away from forcing this to a third. There's a look at the hitting percentage. Crab and Sanders still winning that battle, hitting 524, and Dalhauser Patterson at 378. And the two players that have been targeted are Patterson and Taylor Crab. 38 attempts for Patterson, as you mentioned, Cameron, 19 kills for a 316 hitting percentage. And then Crab on the other side of the net, 19 kills on 34 attempts, hitting 441. And if you're just joining us, welcome in to the New Orleans Open men's final. We are nearing the conclusion of set number two. Bill Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson, the number one seed with a solid, solid conclusion here. 19 to 17, they're getting awfully close to being able to push this to a third set. 
against Taylor Crab and Taylor Sanders. Big block, Saul Hauser. Well, he rolled the dice here and there. Taylor Crab has been chiseling off the fingers, off the elbows, but not this time. Built this up in a formidable block, presses over, his timing's impeccable, and that ball goes straight down. Man, it's so fun to watch that replay there. You can see how Phil wraps that right hand around. Big block. Man, what a great shot. Taylor Crab coming back and attacking those same hands. You know, if you're Taylor Sander, I would go back and just absolutely bomb this serve. Just like the aggressiveness we've seen earlier, you got to get yourself back in it. There it is, Jane Blanton. Nostra Davis, three aces now for Sander. Nineteen twenty. You must win by two. Bill with a shot. And Taylor Crab was up with the net. Bill Dolhauser making him pay, pushing us to a third set. We're having too much fun to leave New Orleans yet. We'll be back with set number three. At Corner Bakery, we're making your choice simple with choose two options every day. Choose two of your favorites and turn a simple lunch into a perfectly paired meal. And we're not talking about a few choose two options. Pair up any sandwich or panini, any cafe fresh salad or warm simmering soup, or any pan sauteed pasta. So many kitchen crafted options, so little time. Your perfect choose two combination is waiting at the Corner Bakery. Dear Mainland, aloha. My brother and I hear that most of you only disable your phones when you fly. You call it airplane mode. But maybe you don't have to get on a plane to get away, yeah? Allow my brother to demonstrate. You know what we call this? Kona mode. One life, right? Mahalo. Longboard Island Lager and Big Wave Golden Ale from Kona Brewing. It has been an epic men's final to this point in the 2022 New Orleans Open here at Coconut Beach Volleyball Complex. It is Phil Dahlhauser and his partner Casey Patterson and their first time playing against one another. And they're facing off against Taylor Crabb and Taylor Sander in their first season on tour as partners and Taylor Sander with his first shot at a title in 2022. Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Blanton, and this crowd has been raging in the sun. And you gotta say, that last ball from Phil Dahlhauser, whew, that says anything about how set number three is gonna go. This man might be looking at his 61st title. Yeah, he hit that last ball with an exclamation point, no doubt about it. I think he was sending a message. Let's see if he can roll that momentum here in the second, in the third set here. Taylor. Taylor Crab says, not so fast. Nice swing on the outside. A little bit of a deeper swing as well. Taylor Crab has 13 career wins, eight of which have been on the AVP tour. How about that rundown? It's got to be hard to find your bearings in some of those moments, Dane. I feel like you're getting twisted up as a defender, turning and diving for balls, and then all of a sudden you have to take an attack. Yeah, you, you really have to have good court awareness, where you're at, how balance is another huge thing. But, uh, you know, this third set, this is all about grit. It's all about passion, desire, going after the balls defensively. We saw Patterson step up his game in the second. The only way the Taylors win this if they grab that momentum back and that aggressiveness that we saw. But it, you got four athletes going at it. This one could go either way. And that's what's making it so much fun. Phil Dahlhauser, one of the greatest servers of all time. Taylor Crab, perfect ball, and Phil is right there. 
Phil really getting into his blocking groove right now, and that's putting a lot of pressure on Taylor Crab. He's rolling the dice. He's challenging. I like that. He's er making Phil earn it if they're going to earn points. Phil from the good side. You can see the flags above our stadium here. They stay on Crab. Huh. So much pace, it buckled Casey Patterson's elbows. Patterson right in the optimum position to dig that ball, but when you're peppering balls like Taylor Crab and putting that much heat on him, it's very difficult to control. I have a feeling I'm going to get heckled for that last call. Casey, I'm going to hear about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Cut and that is on the line. Wow. Patterson is just dialed in right now. Everything he hits is, is on the outside of the line. He's digging unbelievable shots. And look at this. He comes in, looks like he's going to hit. Then a little downshift. And Taylor Crab could have played that ball. He made a decision thinking it was out. Yeah, and we've talked about it throughout this matchup. The angle block in front of Casey Patterson has been pretty effective, especially with some late moves from Taylor Sander. And perfectly placed from Taylor Crabb. Got a measuring now stick out there. That's what I was going to say, Cameron. That was a perfectly placed line shot. I don't know if you could place it any better. I mean, Casey Patterson's on the run. He's there. He's read it, but it's just too good. Back. There we go. Taylor Krabs missed that serve a few times, going from the right sideline of his court to the opposing right sideline, trying to add a little bit of side spin on it. This game three only goes to 15 points. You must win by two. They switch every five points. Liking those jerseys on Taylor Sander and Taylor Crab. I think those are custom. Taylor Crab saying he was uh, planning on making some custom jerseys for the season. I wonder if we can get our hands on one of those. One away from the switch. In and out of the shadows for Sander. And this angle is incredible to see. You can see just how far Phil Solohauser, six foot nine, reaches over the net. Yeah, well, Taylor Sander got caught on the right side, and then the set wasn't wide enough, so he had to jump inward. The set was on his left shoulder, and that kept him blind. He didn't see where Phil was, and that's what cost him. And another block. Two in a row for Phil. It's Phil, doing Phil, Phil doing Phil things, Dane. Phil doing Phil things. You know, he's just a difference maker, you know. He disrupts every single time. Once he starts to get in his groove, he's taking away so much area. As an offensive player, you're kind of just dumbfounded on, you know, what do you do? Where do you go? And right now, Phil's locked in. Well, that's a good spot. We've seen Crab do this frequently, try, trying to attack some of those high angles off of Phil's hands. At times in the past few a day, and I can recall maybe trying to have Phil close up some of those spread blocks he's doing with his hands, maybe take one to the head. I've seen Taylor do that in the past as well. I'm not saying that's the equation. I'm just saying I've seen it done before. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's interesting. You brought up the jerseys, Cam. Because are, are, usually guys don't wear jerseys, right? Phil doesn't have a shirt. Is this a sponsor thing? Yeah, I think those are custom made. They designed those. I like it. I think it's sweet. What? 
And again, just two points away between these two teams. This is where things start to get dialed up. Is the scouting report really a thing at this point, or is it just best ball, Dane? Well, like I said, it's passion, it's hustle, it's being aggressive and, and trying to play with as much urgency as possible because points are stingy on both sides. And there's Taylor Sander no, again so well. this time. So it's about executing, being in the right spot at the right time, really falling back on the way that you've trained. And we're seeing four athletes just battle. And this, I think, is going to come down to the wire if not going over time. Dane, you talked about the 17-17 block in set number two at the hand of Phil Dahlhauser. What about this one? Gets him within one, but at the hand of Taylor Sander. And not, not to mention against Phil Dahlhauser. That's a big play, no matter how you, the way you look at it. It, it gives you some momentum. And uh, I don't know if it was as big as that one at 17 all because we're not later on in this set, but that was a big one. And Allhauser and Patterson still with a two point edge. Somehow, Crab and Sander are going to have to cut into it and they're going to have to take some risk probably to pull it off. Mark that one on the stat sheet, Dane. Another fall down set from Phil Dahlhauser. Beautifully placed. Crafty and the ball oh lands over the top. If Casey Patterson, you are going to have nightmares by giving that point up. He was there. He was. He made a conscious decision to let it go out of bounds. It looked like here comes a roll shot. He's right there. Watches it and it's in. So could be costly. Boy, what an angle, Casey Patterson. Maybe not. Maybe not is accurate. It is honestly so stunning to see Casey Patterson take swing after swing after swing, keeping his body in such great shape, 42 years old, looking like he's 18. Beautiful cut shot by Taylor Crab right there. Patterson has 43 attempts, but get this, Taylor Crab has 46 attempts. So both of them getting plenty of work. Hopefully they have the ice ready to ice down after this final, but uh, the game plans are pretty clear on which team each opponent is going to. And Taylor Sander goes with a line to line serve. They put Crab at the net again. And we saw that on the final point of set two. And peppering the sideline. Now, if you're wondering why they put Taylor Crab up at the net, they explain. Well, you know, it frees up Taylor Sander to really rip his serve. And Taylor Sander is an exceptional defender as well. You lose a bit of your advantage because uh, of the height of Taylor Crab. But Sometimes you mix it up, you know what I mean? And you give a different look and it can work. You've got to be creative out there. You can't be stagnant and you can't continue to do the same thing always. Just five points left to be played. Potentially more as Taylor Crabb got a hand on it with too much pace from Katie, Casey Patterson. The great explanation we saw Taylor Crabb and Taylor Sander do exactly that and one of their matchups last night, putting Taylor Crabb at the net, letting Taylor Sander just unload from the service line. They stay on Crabb. Wow, and a free ball option to the corner. French fries on the board. It looked like Patterson was there to make that happen, but could not control it. Check it out right here. Patterson slides in the angle. He's got to keep that ball on the your side of the net because if it goes over, it's just a free ball situation. Then the Taylors know exactly what to do with it. That's a great point. That ball getting right on the platform of Casey Patterson, but sent back over a missed opportunity there in transition. Does he make up for it? He does. Short down the line. Wow, that was probably the hardest shot he had. It looked like they were blocking his seam. 
Taylor Crab had slid into his line. There wasn't much line, but he decided to go short line, fortunately, for Casey. Patterson Dolhauser up by one. Great pass from Crab. Bill moved a little bit early, jumping into that angle, and Taylor saw it, drop shot right down the line, and we're all locked up at 12. Are you having fun yet, Dave? Yeah, this is, this is as intense as it can get here. An amazing finals so far. And I like what I see there from Casey Patterson. The angle block was in front of him, but he had to go full angle. There's always more angle, right, Casey? Oh, and Sander was jumping in, trying to Kong block him with one arm, and he knows he, he let one get away right there. He needed to take just a little bit more with that sharp angle. And if you're just joining us on the 2022 tour, there is no freeze in effect anymore. That is out of bounds. All out of bounds. 50th, 50th, 50th attempt by Taylor Crab. That ball just goes out of bounds. Bill Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson are one point away from the New Orleans Open Championship. Not so fast. Crab and Sander, 13 to 14. They must find some defense here. What do you do uh, if you're Crab? Do you float serve that ball in, make sure they handle it, or are you trying to rip a jump serve? This is a tough decision. Ball on Casey Patterson. He checks down. It's down. The number one seed reigns through your New Orleans Open champions, Bill Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson. Wow, was that exciting to watch right there. And so, chalk it up, 2-0 and o in retirement for Phil Dahlhauser. I mean, retirement looking really good for Phil. And how about <laughs> Casey Patterson? A lot of pressure playing with the GOAT, and he does not disappoint. Some of the best defense I've seen Casey play, and it's so fun to see these guys rejuvenated, both 42 years of age. All right, well, here is our Kona Brewing Company. Cheers to the champs, Phil Dahlhauser and Casey Patterson, your 2022 New Orleans Open men's champions. The fifth partner Phil Dahlhauser has won with on the AVP Tour. He's gone back to back from Austin to New Orleans. Number 61 now knotted on Phil's resume. Make it 18 total for Casey Patterson, two of the great legends and veterans in the game of beach volleyball in the United States, picking up an additional trophy. I think this one's going to sit high on the mantle, Dane. Yeah, I think all of these really just cement Phil's legacy even more. He's playing with different partners and racking up the victories. I think we've got Mark Sherman down on the sand. Take it away, Mark. Never been at a loss for words. You're a loss for words. Uh, Phil, Phil, meanwhile, is just going unbelievable, unbelievable, which is exactly what you said after your win in Austin teaming up with another new partner. Now your fifth different partner you've won an AVP with. Phil, how are you doing this? You know, uh, I got a couple blocks in case he just sided out, I mean, consistently all weekend long. And that, that takes a lot of pressure off uh, scoring points. And Casey, you're at a loss for words. You got, you got to find something. I was telling the guys earlier, you know when everybody sits back and watches Phil in the finals and you're like, yeah, dude, anybody can win with Phil. Listen, there's a lot more pressure than everyone thinks. You know what I mean? Having to side out every ball. So that was a special moment to not blow it when I had my chance with Phil. <laughs> uh, uh, 
these guys are playing against Taylor Crabb, Taylor Sander, phenomenal athletes, obviously going to be on the tour uh, for a long, long time. Taking a serve like that from Taylor Sander, man, when he dials it in, that is huge. What was your mindset going up against the Taylors, Phil? Well, uh, dealing with Taylor's serve is uh, kind of a pain. Uh, I just try to get it up on our side of the, on our side of the court and uh, try to deal. And uh, that guy, he serves hard. <laughs> he, serves, he serves extremely hard. It's big boy ball. It's like real, like big boy volleyball. That's what the best players in the world serve like. And Taylor Sanders has been one of the best players in the world for a long time. So you got to put your big boy pants on and be ready to get blown up. And uh, OK, so your fourth win, fourth different partner that you've won with, fifth different partner. The sign-up deadline is approaching for Hermosa. Gentlemen, who are we playing with in Hermosa? John Sutton. John Sutton, yes, a name we all know and we're expecting, yes. We'll figure out who that is pretty soon. And what about you, Casey? Um, Mark, I can't say his last name, uh, Sherm, Sherm, how do you say You that? heard it right here, yeah. folks. My wedding gift from Casey Patterson. We are teaming up in Hermosa Beach. Yes, now I'm going to wrap it. I just had to get to that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your winners here in NOLA, Phil Dahlhauser, Casey Patterson. us so much on the AVP tour for myself, Dave Bland, Mark Sherman, and our entire Echo Entertainment crew, not to mention our AVP family. We'll see you next time on the beach.